Hello, and welcome to another episode of the IA Talks AI. My name's James King, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Derek Hasty, the Chief Technology Officer at Legal and General Investment Management. Derek, great to have you here. James, great to see you again, and thank you so much for having me on the podcast. It's really great to be here. Derek, it feels like a bit of a special occasion. This AI report that we've been working really hard on for most of this year has come out. It's called Artificial Intelligence, Current and Future Usage Within Investment Management. I think the title does a pretty good job of describing what it's all about. But this is really the output of the third and final stage of the technology working group. Uh, So in its first two phases, it was looking at fund tokenization. We had some really great results there. And that work is continuing at the IA, which is fantastic. But this third and final phase was looking at AI. And throughout the process, it's been ably chaired by your firm, Legal and General Investment Management. Your CEO, Michelle Scrimjaw, was the, the chair, supported by yourself and also Gavin Green. Um, So wanted to ask you, what's the experience been for you of of chairing and leading this working group over the last year or so? Nice to see you're starting with easy questions, James. Well, I think the short answer is it's been a tremendous experience. I remember when we started this just before summer 2023, and a CEO, Michelle Skimmerger, told us that we would be, we had till October to define a strategy for tokenization in the UK, and Elgin was leading the working group. As I was thanking Michelle for the opportunity, I I must admit feeling a bit nervous at the time about how we're going to deliver such such an insight in such a short time frame. And so when we ran our first working group back in July 23, at the end of the first session, I asked the group to do three things. To contribute, because this was a a team game and not an individual sport, uh, to work at pace and to have some fun. And I must admit, through all the meetings that we've had, whether they've been face-to-face or virtual, there has been a great contribution from all parties involved, a lot of energy and a lot of laughs along the way, mostly at my expense, but it's all been good. And I think most importantly, as an industry, we delivered. We delivered what we said we wanted to do in terms of our views on tokenization, and once again today, in terms of our views on artificial intelligence. And as it is a podcast, I would like to do a little shout out, if you don't mind, James. I'd Go like ahead. just to say a special thank you to everyone involved, especially the team at EY, Amarjeet Singh, Robin Kennedy, Jean Sun, and then also the FCE, Nikki Trost, Josh Atterborn, the Treasury as well. And just a huge thanks to, to yourself, James, and, and John Allen, the, the IA as well. It's been a great team effort, actually. Couldn't agree more. Real team effort. It's been great working with everybody and thank you as well for your leadership throughout the whole working group it's been very much appreciated okay so let, let's get into the the content of this latest ai report then so one of the the main drivers behind doing this was to try and get to the heart of how firms within the investment management industry are currently maneuvering themselves so that they can seize and capture those opportunities that AI is now presenting. And in particular, uh, generative AI, which has really burst onto the scene over the last year or so. So if you wouldn't mind speaking to that, like what were some of the key findings that we came up with in the report? Sure. So, so let's, first of all, let's recognize that our industry has been using AI for a long time. Things like classical AI for algal trading has been common practice for many years. As generative AI came in in late 2022, as you just mentioned, James, it greatly expanded the range of opportunities firms can go after. In the latest report, we document some of these new use cases that Gen AI can help deliver, such as institutional knowledge bots that help answer questions about firms' processes and technology, Gen AI smart assisted responses to client requests, and also smart KYC. Also, as a CTO, there's many interesting use cases in the software development lifecycle, everything from assisted generation of requirements to AI doing peer code reviews, AI automatically generating test cases from release notes. So through the working group with the industry, it's fair to say that what we were observing is that many firms are currently at the same stage of identifying use cases like the ones we just mentioned, experimenting, piloting, training their staff and scaling up. 
So looking ahead, it's going to be quite an exciting time for innovation in the industry. And of those many use cases that we detail in the report, are there any particular ones that get you really excited as a chief technology officer? Of course, I'm going to favour all the ones in the software development cycle. But honestly, for me, it's more about the business to, uh, business process transformation. So things that we can do to help respond to RFPs, things that we can do to help in the ESG space where we're looking to answer some of the critical ESG questions we ask certain firms. So I do think there's a lot of opportunity there on the business side that is as, as, as exciting as all the technology stuff we can do as well. Fantastic. So lots and lots of opportunities. So I guess it's all plain sailing then, super easy to implement all of this stuff, or or what are the implementation challenges that have really sort of come to light in the early stages of this uh, innovation journey? Well, actually, the report does go on to talk really quite well about some of the implementation challenges. It actually describes five implementation challenges facing firms internally and several external enablers and barriers to industry adopting AI. In terms of the internal challenges facing firms, the strongest theme shared by the group was internal cultural resistance to change. Clearly, this is not a new challenge. As we all know, with any new technology, there are those that are enthusiastic to adopt it and those that are reluctant to change. And therefore, the case for change and how you internally market this change is something that firms need to carefully work through. The other main internal challenges we discussed was figuring out how to measure the cost and value. We all acknowledge it's an area that's new to us and we're all learning as we go here. So a close eye on benefits is key. And then finally, when it comes to external challenges, managing AI risks is a big one. Even though we have strong risk management frameworks in place, being a regulated industry means we need to take new AI risk responsibilities very seriously. If you wouldn't mind me picking up on a couple of those. So internal cultural resistance, like what do you think is the potential solution there for firms? Like how can firms do a better job of bringing all of their people on the journey and maybe, you know, perhaps trying to win over some of the more skeptical members of staff who may be more reluctant to you know, adopt new ways of doing things with AI? Yeah, I think it's that normal change process you need to go through. You need to have a clear case for change. You have to have a clear communication strategy. You need to know what it means for you as an organization. Most organizations are looking at this as a co-pilot, as an enabler. It's good to get those messages out there because that does help land the message safely with the teams about how you're looking about and what you want to do. So really deciding what it means for, for, for you as an organization, how you want to communicate it, uh, getting those communications out, and then starting to do the normal things around building pilots, building champions, starting to communicate the success of those areas. That whole traditional change cycle is 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 essential as you go through this. Great. Thanks, Derek. And if you wouldn't mind me asking for your opinion on measuring the value of AI use cases. So we're at quite early days at the moment when it comes to this stuff. Do you think that firms need to be looking you know, really objectively at the sort of cost benefit analysis of every AI use case at this early stage? Or is there an argument to be made for having a little bit more sort of scope for experimentation, you know, playing around with things without necessarily needing that immediate payoff just to see where things might progress and, and how ideas can start to flourish? Yeah, James, I'm going to watch her and answer this one because obviously Gavin Green helped lead the AI uh, IE side of this report. Gavin, for those who don't know, is a finance director with an LG. So I'm sure his view will be slightly different to mine. But again, jokes aside, I, for me, we still don't all really know what the art of the possible is here. So the more that we can still experiment and we can bring the technology in and we can start to put it on people's desks and we can save 10 minutes here, 15 minutes here, an hour there, I think these are all good things for us to actually understand the technology, to understand the art of the possible, to help us then really understand how far this can go. So I, I definitely favour the experimentation side of it. But I recognise that these are not the cheapest systems to implement this moment in time as well. So it's a real balance. And, and 
everybody's taking different approaches. Some people are trying to take that moonshot approach and trying to to find a way to to build the killer app. Uh, for us, we think it's more slow growth I and mean, an ex- experimental way to go is a good way to go through this. Oh, uh, completely makes sense. And in the report, we talk about some of those external factors which are very relevant for firms' innovation efforts. And one of the key ones that really came through was access to appropriate AI skills and talent. So what's your perspective on that? Is what what's your experience been as a chief technology officer when it comes to, you know, holding on to your people and trying to go out into the job marketplace and, you know, find people with the skills that you need to try and make your plans come true? Yeah. Again, as you say, a really critical point in the report. Within LNG, we have a well-established partner model that supports our permanent engineering community. So we've been fortunate enough to use those partnerships to accelerate our learning in AI and help us establish AI apprenticeships as well. That said, however, working with the task force and looking at the wider picture in the UK, it's clear to see that the demand for AI skills has never been higher. There is an insufficient supply of suitable AI skills, experience and expertise in the labour market at present. I also don't think we've really got our heads around yet the the art and the possible of what human level reasoning AI capabilities will bring now that that's just coming out and what that could mean for the processes that we run today, but also what that could mean for even more uh, demand for change and more demand for talent. So there is definitely a demand and supply gap at the wider UK level. And the report goes on to recommend that the government looks to strengthen its commitment to promote the growth of computer science, data science, software engineering, and other related fields within our universities and other areas. And that is a very strong recommendation from the report to help us bridge that gap. Right. Thank you so much, Derek. I think those recommendations we make in the report will be very important going forward so that firms have you know the right environment so they can really flourish and and push ahead with their innovation efforts so Derek thank you very much for your time today really appreciate it and all of your um, fantastic hard work that's gone into the technology working group overall and thank you everyone for listening please do check out the report that we've been discussing today. Wherever you're listening to this, there should be a link to the report immediately below and highly encourage you to go ahead and take a look. If you have any questions or or things you'd like to discuss off the back of it, we're always very happy to, to speak. So please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Thank you very much.